from the dark we come into light. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'll quickly talk about some dreams I've had. Since this is a dream diary number three. Oh, why do I start? Alright, so dreams I'm having at the moment. I keep having uh, dreams about a friend of mine who was kind of more kind of less than a friend of mine a while ago uh, called Courtney. Um, it's embarrassing because they're really, really quite erotic dreams. Like, just dreams where I'll be doing stuff in normal day-to-day -day activities and suddenly she'll just pop up like she'll be under a table while I'm trying to talk to my family like pulling on my dick and pulling on my um, jeans and shit and I'm just like muttering under her breath like caught me caught me for fuck's sake caught me caught me I can't have a blowjob right now my family's here and then I look down and she's just gone and I'm like caught what the fuck what kind of crazy goblin demon tricks do you today? And then I keep having other like weird dreams that loads of her soft soiled knickers are just like everywhere, just falling from the sky, floating everywhere. There's no one else around. It would be like imagining scenes from the film The Snowman or when it's snowing and it's just like it's casually snowing her knickers apparently, the smell of her, if that makes sense. And it's like, yeah, it's just snowing them, it's cold, and it's like the same sort of euphoria you get when you go outside and it's snowing and you're looking like, it's magnificent. So it's like, oh, magnificent knickers. Ah, oh, beautiful. What a nice day. Really, really fucking bizarre dream to have. And then I keep having dreams and like imaginings when I'm sort of halfway going to sleep that I'll open a fridge or a cupboard or some kind of storage area at one point and then when I turn around she'll be poking her head out and she'll be like what are you doing man? what are you doing? what are you doing? I'll just be like Courtney for fuck's sake and she'll just be like mm, Courtney Courtney mm, Courtney mm. and then yeah just I don't know just dreams like that she keeps fucking spooking me with her dreams and uh yeah, sometimes I end up cuddling up at the end of the dream and wake up just like, what the fuck? So yeah, she's in my head subconsciously apparently, or my dreams are telling me she is. I'm not sure why, but yeah, that seems to be the thing. Um, yeah, that was just a minute to begin. Another dream I want to talk about that's a bit more, uh, I don't know, crazy and serious is... A dream that I had before I went to Australia. So a while back I went to Australia, um, had a break from this place, ended up getting a really cool job, meeting loads of anarchists, blah blah blah. But this dream somewhat pushed me to go there. I was already making the decision in my head and it pushed me to go there. I hope I haven't done this in the other dream diary. I don't think I have. It's hard for me to keep up with them. But um, yeah, so I had this dream where Basically, I went to sleep, and the theme that was in my head was racist Australians. For some reason, that theme made sense. There was nothing explicitly saying that. I just could feel that the theme was racist Australians. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, turned out that um, in this dream, uh, I end up in like sort of a kind of forest or a mudded area, like a tribal area of like, I don't know, like kind of sparkling, mystical, magical sky just comes out of nowhere, like you, like you see in uh, sort of fairy cartoons and uh, you imagine at the end of the rainbow like fairy dust shit, I don't know, I don't know how I'd explain that, but pretty magical enchanting scene, and then there's this giant like, sort of troll type huge, more like wide than it is tall, but fairly tall, it'd be like 10-12 foot, but also huge, huge as fuck, like a barrel of a creature, 
really ugly, disgusting, and crazy looking. And yeah, it was a really fucking scary, scary feeling, but it didn't do anything, it didn't say anything, it just kind of looked at me like it was an evil presence. And this weird white flying thing sort of whispered into its ear, flew off, and then I woke up. The weird thing is, whilst the presence of this big monster thing was the scary thing, I was consciously aware that for whatever reason, the flying creature was the one in control and the flying creature was the like an evil being or like something nasty. And that flying creature was uh, sort of a soul of magic and it was also a light being at the same time. So yeah, some pretty weird double meanings and strange that the fairy had the power yet the fairy was what I feared. I'm not sure what that means. It probably has some sort of metaphor in there. But at the end of the dream, I um, I heard a voice called Barunga. Woke up from this dream and thought, fuck me. I need to find out what the fuck Barunga is. I don't know why. And obviously it's similar to Barandunga, which is scopolamine and this kind of thing, but it wasn't. It turns out there's a guy in Australia, Aboriginal guy, who wrote a uh, story called this little fella and this little demon or this little boy and this little demon. I can't remember now, I did have the book, if I had it on me now I'd show you it because damn it's quite interesting um, what actually happened and it's the fact that this really happened and well I'll, I'll get into that now. So yeah, I bought this, uh, I saw this book on the internet by a guy called Albert Barunga, no word of an Aboriginal guy. So it's Australian descent, called this little boy and this little devil, right? On the cover there's like a bat or something, which I always have dreams of bloody bats. And um, yeah, I read through this book, and it's like this Aboriginal lady telling this boy uh, not to go out in the woods or not get lost in the woods. And this gigantic troll creature, the exact one from the damn book, comes to like, I don't know, attack the kid or whatever and I'm thinking to myself, holy fuck, this is actually the dream. Like that is weird. If if it were just like a book and I read it and it was nothing to do with the dream and it was all sort of just like, oh, well that's chance. It's the fact that I couldn't have known about that. Like I've never seen that book, I've never had that concept. Um, I've been to Australia before so no originals but I wouldn't be able to fit those things together so perfectly, so it was just, it's either extremely coincidental, or there's something else going on, or it's just fucking weird. But anyways, the book ends uh, with a big flying bat basically picking the boy up and getting him out of the danger, which is a similar kind of metaphor to what happened in the dream. So. Yeah, all in all, it was pretty fucking strange, and it was uh, pretty significant that that happened in a way, because according to, uh, like, old Aboriginal, Aboriginal isn't actually the right word, and I'm saying it because that's the word everyone understands, but it's actually indigenous peoples, and they'll tell you that themselves, and you also find that Aboriginals and indigenous people aren't, like, all the same. Australia wide, uh, different divisions in Australia have different languages. Australia is basically like the USA in a way, uh, well, in a lot of ways. I suppose it was colonised by a load of bastards who killed the natives. But um, it kind of had like 50 or so states uh, divided by tribes before it was colonised by um, white English and I don't know, Spaniards or something. I think it's just the English. So yeah. I had this dream and um, yeah apparently um, there are what are called aboriginal dreaming stories um, where basically uh, people are summoned um, by aboriginal tribes or by the spirits in that country um, to do wonderful things within their dreams and such and it's just, I don't know, it's just a crazy coincidence and it worked, it took me to Australia and it was one of the best things in my life. It was something I had to do, I should have done, and it was the right thing to do. For whatever reason, it just all turned out perfectly and it was it was just kind of supposed to. Like, It taught me something in that period of my life that I'll never learn from 
a book I can never really give those experiences to other people I can't really explain what happened it was just yeah it was just a game changer so yeah that's one of the well probably um, not the single most weird dream in terms of the actual dream itself isn't that weird but it's probably the single most weird sort of spiritual event that I've had that's dream related um, that's really all I've got off the top of my head now as it's still the fucking horn so yeah I hope you enjoyed that story and uh, if you know much about Aboriginal dreaming and such um, yeah let me know anyways thank you very much for watching